everybody this is Bobby with Bobby stamps and I'm gonna show you how I made this cute card I participated in a blog hop and this is the card I chose to make it was either patriotic or summer and I'm gonna be honest with you the first time I saw the um, our new dynamic impressions the ruffled folder that's what I saw was a flag and just like the waves when the wind is blowing it so I had this idea for this card and it's super sweet and I just love it and I hope you guys do too. So we're going to use that embossing folder and then I'm going to use the Oh My Stars embossing folder. That is what I used for this part up here with the stars on it and then I just added a few rhinestones. And then so you are going to need the jewel rhinestones and I'm using my old that I have up before I purchase any of the new ones. And then the confetti celebration is where I got my um, sentiment that goes on the front. Our card base is Knight of Navy, and then I have a piece of the silver glimmer paper, and this is cut at four by five and a quarter, and then I used the layering stitched framelits to cut out the blue, Knight of Navy, and then I used just the regular square and our layering squares for the white. This is what I um, used the impression folder on to put the stars. <clears throat> You're going to need a piece of Whisper White, and this is what we're going to stamp the sentiment on. And this is cut at, um, I believe I cut this one at four and a half, and it's an inch wide. I cut it a little bit longer because when I take the triple banner punch and make the ends, I'm going to lose a little bit. So that's why I always like to make it a little bit longer than what I actually want it to be. Then I cut three pieces of Real Red and three pieces of Whisper White. These are about three quarters of an inch wide and I cut them five and a quarter inches long because I want to be able to square it up if I have um, glue these together and don't get them exactly straight. I just, you know, I want them to be five inches and um, the, the, when I'm done, this part to be three and three quarters by five inches so that way I have room to even them up if I need to. I'm gonna use my silicone mat and then I will show you on the big shot how I I got um, used the impression folder for this and the stars, just so that way you guys know since that, that was probably the most tricky part of this card. So I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna put just a little bit of Tombow glue along one of the Whisper White and just then layer the real red and this is probably the hardest part is trying to get these fairly somewhat straight and then just lay that there then we're going to do the same with another real red strip and make sure you guys uh, visit my blog today it's bobbystamps.blogspot.com and you will see all of the cards that were made um, created for this blog hop there are some pretty amazing people on the team that I'm on that participate in this monthly blog hop and you'll get a lot of inspiration from seeing everybody's cards like I said the the theme was patriotic or summer is what we could choose to make our cards and I just really 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 wanted to try this flag and then we'll do another red and the red piece on the bottom is normally going to be um bigger than the other pieces that we're layering together just because it's the bottom piece if you don't like that you can trim it up once you're done to try to make it you know be symmetrical if that bothers you it didn't bother me once my card was done at all and then this is our last piece and then i let mine dry for a little bit i didn't immediately run it through my big shot just because you want the glue to to set for a little bit so I'm just gonna take this I'm just gonna leave that on the mat and then I'm just gonna set it off to the side and what we can do is we can do our stamping for our sentiment I have to grab my triple banner punch from behind me so we'll just lay this down and grab our Knight of Navy which I also forgot to have out. I always forget something in every video. I forget to get something. And I'll stand here before I start the, the camera and look and go over the card in my head and make sure that I have everything. And then lo and behold, it seems like every time there's something I've left somewhere that I needed. 
So we're just going to stamp that down. I got that a little bit high, but it's okay. I'm not going to fuss about it. And then I just took the triple banner punch and I like to flip it over so I can kind of see and then just put the tail in and then just pop that out and then do the same thing on this end. We're just going to slide this in here about the same amount that we did on the other end. Pop that out and then you can look and see if you have it. And if you don't, you can, um, what I did actually on my first one was I just cut that off and repopped it out. So it's not not that hard, not that big of a deal. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring the big shot in and I'll show you um, how I did it on the, for the stars. Let me grab my other plate. I only need one for the dynamic impressions, but forgot I needed that one. So we're just going to take the piece of Whisper White and you can put it anywhere. You know, I kind of like tried to make sure I was going to get the biggest bang for my buck and tried to at least get three of the stars on there. Put that through there. And then we're just going to layer our second cutting plate on there. then you have your stars. Can you guys see that? So you have your stars. And this side, it's raised a little bit more than it is on that side. So I'm going to make sure that the side is the side that's up when we glue that together and put our rhinestones on. Now I'm going to go ahead, my paper, my cardstock might stick a little bit to this just because, you know, I haven't let the glue dry long enough, but for demonstration purposes, we'll deal with that. So I'm going to flip it over the side that I want to be on the front where it says Sizzix and Stampin' Up! logo. That side, I'm going to put the front of my card down and then just close that up. I'm going to get a little bit straighter. It moved a little bit because I'm trying to hold it straight up so you guys can see instead of down. And then I'm just going to fold that. And then you can kind of see where your waves are going to be. You can adjust it if you want the waves to be in different spots, which I think I'm going to move it down a little bit and see if I can get maybe a few more waves. Yeah, I kind of like that. So with the dynamic impression folders, you don't need both of your clear plates. You only need one because the, the impressions folder is so thick. So what I'm going to do is I run it all the way through till I know that the end of that impressions folder is all the way through the big shot. And then I'm going to back it up. Now I sprayed my first card. I've seen people say to, to spray your card with um, just a little mist of water. It loosens the fiber. But I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I oversprayed mine. But I did not like the way that it turned out. I could see the watermarks on it. So I'm choosing to not do that with this card. I am just going to run it through the way it is. And that's why I ran it through so many times. You should only have to run it through once. And then if you want to, you can bring it back. You really only need to run it through once. But I just really wanted to make sure that I got um, a lot of that, you know, through to the cardstock. Can't find my piercing tool. But as I told you, I knew it was going to stick because I... The glue still wet, so let me grab my little poking tool and I'll unloosen that really quick. Just I don't want to rip the cardstock, so what I was trying to do. So there we go. That all came out. It worked out. Isn't that just so cute? I love it. So now what I'm gonna do is I want to make sure that my card is gonna measure correctly. So I want this card to be my my base here. I want it to be five inches by three and three quarters. And the glue is still a little bit wet, so it's still sticking on it. So this end right here looks fairly decent. This end, you guys can see I have just a little bit. So that's the end I'm going to decide to cut off. And I'm just going to line it up. And then just cut that right off. Now, if you had a little bit on each end, you could just you know, continue to take little pieces off each end. Now I want it to be three and three quarters 
and it come up short and that's because where I glued it together so that's fine I wasn't too worried about it this way I was more concerned about it this way because where I'm gluing it together if I messed up like I did it was you were going to see some hangover so this this size I'm fine with now this one's just a little bit crooked up here on the top so if you wanted to you could even that up too but I'm not going to worry about it because I think when we put it together it's going to be fine let me as I say that one let's just see how much it's off because I don't want to lose very much so let's just see if I just took a smidge off it's kind of hard to work with it right now, to be honest with you, because the glue keeps wanting to stick. So that looks like about three and a half. So I'm just going to, and see, it didn't even, it just took a smidge off. So I'm not going to worry about it. I don't want to mess up the ends. So what I'll do now is we'll start putting it together. And I'm just going to give that a crease with my bone folder and grab my fast fuse. I like to use fast fuse on the back of the glimmer paper because it's a little bit heavier and just want to make sure that it's going to stick really well. You're just going to even that up and get glimmer everywhere. Then I'm going to take a little bit of that Tombow if I can find what I did with it. And you can use snail, but I'll be honest with you, my snail's out. And I forgot to fill it up before I started the video. So this is what I have. So this is what I'm going to use. So we're just going to center that inside those stitched areas. Move that up a little bit. Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. And then we'll grab our rhinestones. And I'm going to need, it looks like three will fit in the center good. So we're just going to pick that up. Let me grab my snips. I think I work better with using those as my fingers. And then we'll just place that right in the center. And then grab another one. And we're going to put it right there in that center. And one more right there in that one you could put one right there but it will be off so I'm not going to I'm not gonna do that and then I'm just gonna bring this piece back in and I believe I used dimensionals because I wanted that popped up just a little bit so we'll put a few dimensionals on the back and you can use more if you want to I think I'm going to turn it like that. And then you just kind of line it up right there in that corner of your card. Then we're going to put fast fuse on the back of this. And you could probably do that before we put that uh, the stars on there if you wanted to. And then you're just going to center it up. And I like that you can see a lot of the silver. I think I actually like this card better than my first one. Let me show you. Because you can, it, there's more of the silver showing. So I, I think I do like the way that this one's turned out better. This one I think I trimmed it up a little bit more. Now with your bone folder, you can either choose to do this part. You don't have to do this part. But I just kind of liked it. It helped me as a guide. And then you're going to put a dimensional on each end. And don't forget, guys, visit my blog. It's bobbystamps.blogspot.com to get a sneak peek of everybody's beautiful cards that they made. And now I'm going to pop this in the opposite direction like that, just so that way it stands up. Now, if you're going to mail that, you're not going to want it to be that, that big of a pop-up like I did. But I'm not going to mail this to anybody, so I'm not worried about it. You could, you know, make it smaller if you did want to mail it to somebody. But there you guys go. A cute little 4th of July card that you could send to your fam's family and friends. Make sure you visit my blog to check out everybody else's amazing cards that they do. It's bobbystamps.blogspot.com. Thank you, guys.